Hey guys, welcome to Mom Minutes. And today we are out and about here in Tomball. The kids have their outside classes today. And um, so I wanted to use this time to talk to you guys a little bit just about some life hacks, some suggestions that have helped us when we have been homeschooling our high schoolers. So I know every family is different and kids are different. Um, but usually, unless you have that super motivated, super diligent, probably your firstborn child, <laughs> um, that, you know, they, you don't have to tell them to do anything. They just, you know, do it all themselves. You probably are going to have to put some just, uh, boundaries, some, some big boundaries. You don't want to micromanage them in high school, but just some big boundaries, um, for them so that they can have a successful year. So, um, these boundaries right now that I'm going to talk about are for, um, probably ninth and 10th graders. Some of them apply to, you know, ninth through 12th, but mostly ninth through 10th graders because in ninth and 10th grade, you're still trying to help them be successful. And it's kind of, you know, a big jump from eighth grade to ninth grade. And, um, so I feel like just helping them organize their time and know what's important will help set them up to be more successful in the 11th and 12th grades when you're not going to have so many uh, boundaries and restrictions um, for them. So um, so for my 9th and 10th graders, this is kind of what our, um, our boundaries and our schedule looks like. So they need to get up. I said a certain uh, time that they have to be up and about um, on weekday mornings. And that is usually 7.15. They have to be up and they get dressed um, to go outside and exercise by 7.30. And I just really feel like it's important to, for them to have that mindset that they need to exercise in the morning. I think it's a good life habit to instill in them. And, you know, my kids don't do a lot of physical activity right now because we're not in sports. Um, so they need to, you know, the, usually they bike around the neighborhood a couple times or they'll walk around the loop a couple times or it's usually a mile so that they usually do that one time. Or um, if they find an exercise program that they want to do themselves, totally okay. As long as they do something um, physical, then I'm great with letting them choose with what they want to do. Um, so yeah, they exercise at 7.30 and then eat their breakfast and then um, they go take showers and get dressed. I personally feel like it's very important for them to get dressed in regular clothes for the day. I don't let my kids do their schoolwork in their pajamas um, unless they're like deathly ill. Uh, so um, I just feel like it sets a, a, a good they're in a good mindset when they're in regular clothes. If, uh, you know, to get their work done, if they're in their pajamas, I feel like they feel lazy and they're just not as productive with their time. And um, so that's what we've chosen to do. And I know, you know, of course everybody's different, but that's how we do it at our house. So another thing that we've chosen to do, um, especially in the ninth and 10th grade, not so much uh, later, but in the ninth and 10th grade, we really try to keep their outside activities to a minimum during the school week. So, um, you know, we do church during the school week and if they have sports, um, you know, practices, then we will do that during the school week. But other than that, they don't go to the mall, they don't go to the movies, we don't do coffee, um, you know, during the week because I really want them to focus on getting their schoolwork done during the week and just not being distracted. And honestly, as a parent of multiple children, it's so much easier just to say, you know what, unless it's something really special, uh, you know, it's exception to the rule, somebody's 16th birthday party on a Thursday night or something like that, then we're all going to just focus on what we need to focus on during the week. And then on the weekends you can play, you know, and for me that helps, um, just keep things equal and not have to make so many, many decisions during the week for each kid. Like this kid wants to go out with this friend. Well, you said she could go out. Well, can I go out since you're already taking her out? And yeah, it just gets way too complicated that way. 
And so for my sanity and for their um, ability to get their stuff done and to focus, we just keep weekday activities to a bare minimum. Um, so, and it also just brings a sense of peace and calm to our house. Um, when I'm not driving everywhere, taking people different places, I mean, really just doing church and, and if they have a, you know, sports practice, that, that is plenty to keep us busy during the week. So, so that's, that's, uh, just a good, um, just a good habit for them, um, I will also say that they have to have all of their schoolwork done for Monday's classes by Friday. Um, if they don't, then they cannot do any, you know, extra activities until that schoolwork is done. Um, I'd much rather them work on a Saturday, you know, and get their stuff done and then maybe be able to do something with a friend on Saturday night than for them to be panicking and grumpy and, you know, up all Sunday night trying to get their Monday work done. I just feel like that's a good teaching um, opportunity for them um, to know that you get your stuff done during the week so that you can play on the weekend. And, you know, kind of funny story is that when Michaela went to Liberty, uh, she was like, Mom, I feel so guilty. It's Friday night and I don't have all of my schoolwork done, but I'm out with my friends. <laughs> so, so I guess it does stick in there a little bit. <laughs> Another good thing to do, especially if they're not doing outside classes, if they're taking a couple of classes with you at home, is to kind of set boundary marks for their courses of, of when things need to be done. So for instance, our kids do math at home and they do it on a computer program. So I'm not involved with it every day, but I do set up a schedule for them and it's on the calendar. I just write it in. It's not complicated where, hey, you should be on this lesson number at the end of the week. And I just do all of the weeks during the fall and the spring. So they know, you know, how, you know, if they're a, a couple of lessons behind because of something that happened, you know, or if maybe they want to work ahead because they know something's coming up, um, they can just have a good gauge of where they're at. And then hopefully they will not have to do school during the holidays or um, during the summer. Um, so on the flip side of that, if they have not kept up with their, their math schoolwork, then they do have to do school during the holidays. And so, and during the summer, uh, we just had one that did school all summer long, except for the last two weeks of summer. So, but I just let that kid do that. And I don't think that they will do that again, but you just let the consequence be the consequence. And you know, it's, it is what it is. And that's what they chose. It is their choice especially in the ninth and 10th grade. So let them own that and let them own the consequence also. So, you know, if my kids, uh, for the Christmas is coming up and if my kids are not done and on target with their math, then they will not be able to do anything with their friends until it's done. And I will say, you know, that's all I really need to say to them because that in and of itself is a pretty good motivator. And then I just, let the consequence be the consequence. If that is what they have chosen to do, um, then so be it, you know, it's, it's theirs to own. So I would encourage you to do that so that they do not um, have to, um, you know, you, you're scrambling at the end of the school year and everybody's frustrated. Um, just set out the expectation at the beginning of the year or as soon as you can, you know, even now setting up something for them to do um, so everybody's on the same page and knows what the expectations are um, will really help out a lot with frustration. So along with that, um, you also need to start keeping records for their transcript in the ninth grade. What that looks like for me is I just have a file folder where I write down um, each kid's name on the folder and then all the classes they're taking and whether they're out or whether they're at home. And, um, and then, you know, during, at the end of the semester, I write their semester grades down. I print off all the copies from their outside teachers and put them in that folder so that I have all of that in one place. If you are super techie and it's just much easier for you to like put it into a, you know, like a graph or something, then I would definitely do that. I am not techie. 
Phil's the one that does the transcript. So if, you know, that's an option for you, if your husband is much better at that and he can knock it out in five minutes, then let him. <laughs> so you just get all the information for him, write it down. And, you know, he has always done all of our transcripts for the kids. And I'm so thankful that he is really good at doing that. And then the last thing that I will say um, is that in the ninth and 10th grade, you know, I just really try to encourage my kids to start finding an adult that they um, enjoy being around and that they trust, one that walks with the Lord, um, so that they can start thinking about having that adult as a mentor. Um, a lot of our kids have done this, not all of them, but a lot of them have. And it's just been a really great thing to see um, your kid develop a good relationship with, an ano with another adult that you know you approve of too you know they're usually your pretty good friends actually because that's who your kids know um, and you that you trust and it's just so great for your kid to have that person speak into their life and um, you know they'll have good talks with that person and it's just a special and sweet thing so um, I would encourage you to um, have your ninth and tenth graders start looking for that person so homeschooling looks a little bit different when they're in the 11th and 12th grade. One is because you want them to own it. I mean, you want to, you know, we, in 11th and 12th grade, we do not have as many restrictions on them. They're driving usually. Um, they have their first jobs usually. And so, um, you know, they need to know how to do life on their own and figure it out. So again, when they're 16, they're probably gonna start taking some dual credit classes at your local community college. And that is such a great opportunity. I would really encourage you to do that. Um, if you live here in the Woodlands area um, and are part of Homewood um, Christian uh, Homeschool Association, then they have a list and probably other homeschool um, organizations have this too, but they have a list of professors on their website that um, other homeschoolers have used. And so they have the good, the bad, the ugly on there. So, you know, do look at that and try to plan um, the courses accordingly. So when you're planning those courses, of course, you know, you can help your child plan those um, at first, but then have them take responsibility and maybe just you know, write out what they want to take and you just look over it or something like that. But you, the goal is for them to start doing that independently after the first or second time. So, um, but even while they are in, you know, do dual credit, their 11th to 12th grade, I still really encourage them to keep extra activities to a minimum during the, during the school week. Um, and usually it's not too much of a problem because they're trying to work and they're trying to do school. Um, but, you know, just to kind of have that expectation, like this would be a really wise thing to do, son or daughter. Um, so, but again, if they choose wrongly, you know, then, um, then they have to own those consequences. And then of course, you know, let their consequences be their consequences. You are out of the picture um in um you know with their professors and their teachers so if they get a really bad grade or if they fail a class a dual credit class or another class let it be i mean and and just let those consequences speak on their own maybe make them pay for the class i think you know if a dual credit class is like 70 bucks say if you don't pass your class even with a c or something like that, then you owe us the 70 bucks back. So figure out a way that they can make it theirs, but um, but there is, that you're not out any money. So, because that is realistic for when they go to college. If they do not pass uh, classes in college and they do not withdraw, well then you still have to pay for those credit hours. So start early and tell them, hey, if this class is not gonna work, you need to go withdraw and get your money back and, uh, or, you know, the parents' money back. Or, and if they don't do that, then they owe you that money. So, um, you remember, you are not trying to um, micromanage them, but you are trying to um, 
let them know what the natural consequences are going to be when they do not, um, you know, do what they're supposed to do. And then the last thing I will say is, um, you know, in the 11th and 12th grade is a great time for them to start meeting with their mentor. And, you know, that could look like whatever is convenient for their mentor and your son or daughter's schedule. But, um, you know, I would really encourage you um, to encourage them to do that, especially if they're doing sports and if they're working, if they're going to school, they might, it might be hard for them to get to Wednesday night service or um, that sort of thing. But to have somebody that is speaking directly into their life, somebody that walks with the Lord, I mean, you can't beat that. So um, I'm not saying let them skip church. I'm just saying their schedule gets a lot more packed. And so um, that relationship that they will have with that mentor will carry on for years and years to come. So I hope that some of these things are helpful for you. I hope they um, instill in you a desire to, um, you know, let your homeschooler start to be more and more independent um, while, you know, putting big boundaries around them and then kind of dropping those safeguards so that they can experience things on their own, figure things out on their own before they go away to college and really have to do it on their own. So I hope this was helpful and um, I hope you guys have a great week.